Hello, I've been using Obsidian for note taking for the last couple of weeks and I figured out how to get it working in an indirect way on my iPad that is communicating with a Raspberry Pi and I've installed Obsidian on the Raspberry Pi and it means that I can use it wherever I am as long as I've got an internet connection. So I'm just going to show you how I've got it, what my basic setup is and perhaps in future videos I'll go through <coughs> some of the detailed uh, pieces of the jigsaw about how things can be uh, made to work better, okay, or at all. So I am using my iPad Pro on the screen there and I'm using VNC Viewer to remote control my Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna open that up and you will see Obsidian on there. There is a blank note for my journal for the day and you've got my index pages. I'm not gonna get into too much detail about my workflow or my basic setup when using Obsidian. I will definitely uh, give more thought and explore that at some stage. But for today, I'm just going to show you that Obsidian is working on the Raspberry Pi. So if you want to get Obsidian working on your Raspberry Pi, then there are a couple of things you need to bear in mind. First is that you need to be running a 64-bit operating system. So the basic version of Raspberry Pi OS is 32-bit and that will not work. So you need to install a 64-bit OS. The one that I'm using is Ubuntu Mate 20.10, the 64-bit version. Uh, some of the other parts of it that are required to work, like having a VNC server and SH needed a little bit more work uh, after the fact, and also mounting Google Drive, where I put my Obsidian fault, they needed to they needed a little bit of work to get that up and running, but I did get that to work. I suppose in terms of my knowledge and ability, I would say I am moderately technical. So I'm not, a, I wouldn't say I'm a genius, but I know my way around uh, devices and tech, so I can figure out tutorials without always necessarily understanding every single uh, line that I'm typing into the command line, okay? Um, I am going to show you how I installed Obsidian, okay? So the way, if I go into, so if you go to the Obsidian page and if you scroll down, Right, you can get Obsidian for Linux, and if you have a distribution that works well with App Image, that will work. But the version that I used was Flatpak, so I had to go through a few different uh, commands in order to get Flatpak working, and it was a little bit of a process. And the tutorial that I used was about how to install Obsidian on a Chromebook. Okay, so uh, newer versions of Chromebooks over the last few years have supported installing. Linux apps and they support the use of Flatpak to uh, install Linux apps. So uh, I, I followed that tutorial and it gave me a few lines of code. Installing Flatpak, installing the FlatHub repository that works with uh, Flatpak in order to be able to fetch uh, applications and then a line to install Obsidian. So I'll quickly show you how I uh, went through those different lines of code. Right, so I'm gonna go through the three lines of code that you need to follow that I got from that web page about installing Obsidian on a Chromebook. I'm not using a Chromebook, but it's the same process. So first of all, you need to install Flatpak. So you go in the terminal and put that in. Okay, I already have that, so there's nothing new to install. The next step is to uh, add the Flat Hub repository. And the final step is, once that repository is there, is to go ahead and type in that line and install Obsidian. You might, uh, you might see a little prompt to ask you, is it a system or a user app? It is a user app. If that hadn't been installed before, then it would go, it would actually install it. So those are three lines of code are what you need to install Obsidian. You can choose where you keep your vault. 
I am intending to use this on a variety of devices, including a Windows laptop. And when the mobile application becomes available, I will also use it on uh, my iPad as a native app. And there are other Markdown apps that I can use to edit individual notes because it's basically plain text that's saved as Markdown. So uh, having all of my, my vault inside a Google Drive makes sense to me because I pay for 100 gigabytes per month and that's where I'd like to store my data. It would work just as well in OneDrive or in um, iCloud if you're exclusively a, an Apple user. Or I've even seen people um, host their notes in a GitHub repository. That's it for today. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, please like and subscribe to get details of future videos. And I hope to put out another video on Obsidian and other tech issues in the next few days. Bye for now. Enjoy your day.